my mom's shrimp with sage wrapped in pancetta. Now, if you want to do this, like uh, spend a little more time on it, buy your shrimp with the heads on and shells intact. Then when you peel the shells and the heads, reserve them. You devein them, of course. You run a sharp knife down the back of the shrimp and devein them, give them a quick rinse, let them dry. And then you take those shells and you make a fortified stock. How do we do that? You toast the shells, you add some bay leaf, a little peppercorn, and a sliced lemon. Throw it into a pot, toast the shells first, add the other ingredients, add some white wine, and some store-bought bone broth, chicken broth, um, uh, chicken stock, any of those, and then let it reduce. Let this cook together to impart all of that flavor and fortify it. And then you let it reduce and reduce and reduce and reduce and reduce, down to between a half a cup and a cup, and that becomes the sauce for the shrimp. You can skip this whole step and just go to the counter and buy large shrimp tail on, already peeled and deveined. I always do though, I go in where the, they've veined the shrimp and you butterfly it. You want a nice big cavity there that we can put a big beautiful sage leaf into, just like this. The first thing I do with this is the same thing I do with scampi. I take a few cloves of garlic and finely chop or grate it, put it directly on the shrimp with a little lemon zest, not juice, lemon zest. You don't want to start cooking the shrimp. A little drizzle of olive oil, salt and white pepper or salt and black pepper and throw it in the fridge for a little bit. Let it hang out for at least a half an hour so all of that flavor is literally imparted in the shrimp itself. So for any scampi, I make like 20 different types of scampi. For this, we're going to take a large sage leaf, fill that cavity with it, and then you take a piece of pancetta, rolled cured meat similar to bacon, but not smoked, although you can buy smoked pancetta as well. And that's usually in a slab rather than rolled. And you're gonna unroll this and go around the shrimp, kind of like a barber pole. I have a 14 inch nonstick skillet hanging out on the stove. It's barely on right now. When we get ready to throw this in, we'll crank up the heat to medium high. And we want to cook these guys until the uh, pancetta renders in the pan, AKA gives up all of its flavor and its beautiful fat. And we want it to get nice and crisp. So you want that golden reddish brown color. And of course you want your shrimp to be opaque ultimately. We are turning our shrimp now. And at this point, I add, after a minute or so, I add, because the second side cooks much quicker, I add white vermouth. We're gonna add a little splash of this and let that evaporate and cook out. Now we're going to add our fortified stock. It's reduced down beautifully. It's so fragrant and it has a beautiful pink color to it from the shrimp shells that we toasted. And then we're going to, as my mom always said, gloss the sauce. How do we gloss the sauce? Butter! <laughs> few tabs of butter in there. Just see the color and the texture of these shrimp. Like, they're just ridiculous. They are ridiculous. I always serve with a little parsley because that's the way mom does it, so there you go. Elsa Scuderi, this is for you. Okay. Now, we're going to dress a salad with fennel, raw escarole, and red onion, so simply with just lemon juice. Squeeze your lemons cut side up so that the seeds stay with the lemon and don't fall into your salad. The good olive oil we used on our charred bread. My mom always said that your two most useful tools in the kitchen are attached to your arms. That's why I'm dressing the salad with my hands. But I'll put some tongs in for everybody else. There we go. Um, now, the most fun part, let me see if I have a little extra. Yeah, there's a tiny little bit left of stock. I'm gonna just add that last little drizzle there because this part is super fun. You take the bread and jam it into that sauce and that's dessert, people. <laughs>